Chords and coffee number 43. Take you a quick drink. I went camping this weekend in the backyard. Hadn't done that yet. Actually, me and Jess and the boys have not really ever been camping. I'm not one to go camping. I've done a little bit of that in my life, but the boys really wanted to go camping in the backyard, and we have wonderful neighbors, Trey and Macy, if you're watching this. We love you. Thank you. Trey works for Bass Pro Shop, so that man's got some mighty fine quality outdoor sportsman gear that you can find at Bass Pro Shops. And so anyway, uh, we borrowed a tent and lantern, and they had these amazing, I was just going to use sticks, but quickly found that's, you know, uh, easier said than done, but we toasted marshmallows on these, you know, uh, super duper marshmallow hot dog incinerator, perfect for the fire sticks, and um, it was great. We had a great time. What lends me to sharing that with you is that, um, you know, we were, you know, still sleeping on the ground in a really nice tent and some really great sleeping bags with premium uh, lantern, you know, lantern camping equipment. But um, we were still sleeping on the ground and I woke up about three o'clock in the morning and I was acutely aware of all the 46 year oldness of my body laying there, not feeling comfortable. And it reminded me of how we sort of touched on the subject of having a little bit of tension in your release. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Danger chords. I hadn't forgot about the challenge that I issued from last lesson, number 42. Honestly, I'd like to see a few more, you know, video link ideas come, you know, before we launch into something like that. Or I also thought, um, if you're interested, I had someone potentially, I have to look into it a little bit deeper, but I feel like if I was spurred on by my friends and my cords and coffee, you know, community, um, I might do it. And so anyway, somebody offered me to go play a coffee house, like an acoustic thing. And um, that might be kind of a cool thing. So um, the links, if you want me to do a link and demonstrate uh, using the cage system, uh, soloing ideas over, you know, backing tracks, put those on the Quartz and Coffee number 42. If you're interested in seeing your old buddy Nate fighting for his life, doing an acoustic gig, at a coffee house, comment below. Go get that acoustic gig at the coffee house. Or shoot, I don't know. It might even be an electric thing. We'll see. But anyway, if you want to see me play at a coffee house, comment below. I'd be happy to bring you along. So anyway, I, I was thinking about you and I was thinking about this idea of uncomfortable or maybe another way to say it is dangerous major chords. We touched on this briefly last time. Last time we were talking about this um, D in an A chord sort of collided together. So if you would imagine playing, you don't have enough fingers on the guitar. If you walk over to the piano, you can do it really easy. But if you play a D major, and, and I'm, I'm just sort of visualizing a, a piano right now. If I played a D major, so I've got a D, I've got an F sharp, and I've got an A, and then I played an A major, well, I've already got an A, so I don't need that. I just need the C sharp and the E. Those things together where I have D, F sharp, and then A, then the um, C sharp and then the E that basically makes this sort of D major 9 sound but wait there's more when you collide the 1 and the 5 together now piano players have been doing this for years they kind of get it right out of the chute if they've got somebody that's teaching them this sort of chord uh, formula thinking, like we're discussing, you know, guitar players, we hit the ground running, we're learning songs from day one, you know, whereas like a lot of instrumentalists are learning, you know, notes and scales and then eventually leading up to chords. And then if you're a piano player, a guitar player or some other thing, whatever. But a lot of those folks learn a lot of material before they hit a song. Most guitar players I know, we learn songs right out of the gate and we had it, you know, kind of go back and fill in the potholes of information that were paved along the way as we were, you know, just figuring out how to play, right? Well, one of the things that I think we can take from our piano playing friends is this idea of cramming two chords together. And specifically, this video is about the one and the five being crammed together to make that. <laughs> anyway, but what we've got is... 
this A and this D. So let's get out of D for a second just so we don't get trapped in the key of D. Let's do G. It's another great guitar key. So what's G's five? Well, G's five is a D chord. And if we're gonna put a D, just make, here's a D chord. And when I'm making this kind of uh, in a little bit of a different way, what I'm doing is I'm taking my index finger and laying it across the top three strings. So the G, the B, and the high E. And then I'm taking my ring finger and putting that where it normally goes on the third fret of the B. And now I've got my middle finger that I'm just gonna throw down here on this G. I did a lesson on polychords. I played gravity at the, at the top of that lesson. Chords and coffee, uh, I don't remember the number, but it's the one on polychords. And I talk about this a lot. But we're gonna go in much more detail here. So what makes that dangerous? Well, what makes that dangerous is, let's just say there's a ton of songs, like, you know, Angel from Montgomery, uh, uh, Every Rose Has a Thorn. I'm sorry, John Prine, to put you next to Poison. but. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of songs that have one five, you know, a ton of them, because that's a beautiful thing. We love to hear that. Well, what if you did? So what I'm doing here is cage system. I'm playing a G up here, but I'm adding this D to it, okay? And I'm playing a C down here, but I'm adding this D to it, right? And so I'm essentially putting the five chord in a few places where it doesn't readily exist, but the tonality is welcome because those chords all have a relationship together. So here's exactly what I'm doing. Uh, pinky finger. We're basically building this... Uh, Think of it this way, actually. Forget the pinky for a second. Index finger across the seventh fret. Human capo from E to E, right? And then now pinky finger on the tenth fret of the A. Okay, uh, ring finger on the ninth fret of the D. Human capo is catching the G string on the seventh fret. And now middle finger is going to be on the B string of the eighth fret. So that's just a good old-fashioned G chord, but... Maybe you relax this, this human capo to where you're only really concerned with the A string down to the high E. Pinky stays where it's at. And then these guys here, so your ring finger that's on the ninth fret of the D and your middle finger that's on the eighth fret of the B, they're going to come totally off and then back on. Very similar to the Rolling Stones thing we did last lesson, the, that kind of thing. The difference is, is instead of the pinky being on the 10th fret of the low E, making this a D sus, uh, D sus 2, D sus 4, or another way to G over D back to D. Hope I'm not going too fast. If I am, comment below, Nate, slow down. Okay? Instead, our pinky finger is going to be on the 10th fret of the A, holding that G down. But isn't it interesting, just with that one bass note move, That's a lot. Just moving the bass note kind of totally changes the whole thing, right? Interesting thing to remember if you're playing in a three piece or if you're playing with an acoustic guitar player, especially one who likes to capo up a lot and get kind of more in the middle of the neck, there's a lot of beautiful tonality that can happen with just the bass player moving and everybody else kind of, you know, staying relatively static. Just throwing that out there. That one's free. All right, so anyway, back to this. So I did this, we were going. Well, what in the world is that? Super easy. It's a little stretchy, but it's really easy. So pinky finger is going to cover from the G string, uh, well, the D, the G, and the B, sorry. So uh, we're basically making a, a D triad. I've got my pinky on the seventh fret, holding down the D, the G, and the B, right? And then I'm just sliding back to the fifth fret, right? And the whole time, index is holding down the third fret of the A, that C note, right? 
So. And, you know, th there's, um, there's a lot of songs where you're on the four chord and you're... Imagine there's a lot of songs where you, that little walk up would be nice, and all that was is, and again, we did a chords and coffee lesson in thirds where we did basically a major scale, not in G, but that same kind of idea. So here's all I'm doing here. So a pretty walk up here. It's just a G major, but I'm holding C down and I'm moving a G major scale in thirds. So index finger on the third fret of the A, um, holding that C note down. Uh, ring and pinky on the fifth fret of the D and the G string. And then on the seventh fret, same strings. Now move the, the index finger to the eighth fret of the low E. Um, middle finger on the eighth fret of the B string ring finger on the ninth fret of the D and then uh, ring finger on the uh, tenth fret of the D pinky on the tenth fret of the D and then up here to this G major chord so again dangerous is actually in fact if you're a Stevie Dan fan you know that's the mu chord where you have the root the five the suspended seconds or you can think of it as a ninth if it happens to be above the octave so if it's a uh, in this case an a that is above the roots so it's the a that's above the final g of the scale it's above that g then it's going to be a nine whatever it's still a two Sorry, I had a moment. Anyway, and then you've got, so you've got the one, the five, the nine, and then you've got the um, third and the five again, right? Steely Dan Mu chord, Google it, M-U chord. They love to use that instead of major chords, just regular major chords. Anyway, and I love Steely Dan. But how do you play that? Index finger on the 10th fret, middle finger, uh, 10th fret of the A. Middle finger on the uh, 12th fret of the D. Pinky on the 14th fret of a G. And then um, ring finger on the uh, B string of the 12th fret. And then flatten your index finger so you can catch that 10th fret of the high E. And it's movable. And in fact, you probably if you were into 90s, like new metal, new... I never put that together in new chord in new metal. Interesting. Because the new metal thing. They would do that all the time when they had a power chord. And then they would throw that ninth up above it. You see that? So like a G would be um, third fret, low E, fifth fret, A, and then pinky on the uh, seventh fret of the D. That's another kind of a cool thing if somebody's playing, you know. Or, you know, some sort of little melody wants to spring off of that ninth. So right there, the collision of the one and the five gives you a lot of, let's just call it major nine sounds. There's a little bit something else though that's worth looking into. You also have this major seven. So the ma so on a D chord, that F sharp is just the major third, but to a G, it's a major seven, right? And what's cool about that, there's a lot of different places you can move it. You know, we just did the, uh, the previous lesson, we talked about how the one, the um, three, and then the six were all the release chords. Well, when you start talking about adding that major seven 
F sharp in this case. Um, that's where there, there's a really cool chord that I use all the time that I love. That sound. And I love the rub of that right there. What am I doing? Well, I've got my index finger on the third fret of the low E. And then I'm not doing anything on the A. And then my ring finger is going to be on the fourth fret of the D. And so right away, you've got that rub, but there's more rubbing to be done. The next thing is an open G, right? And then you've got, you could have the B there if you wanted to, but I like the, I like putting the D there. So uh, middle finger on the third fret of the B, making that D note, so. Now listen to what happens when I take my index finger off of the third fret of the low E and put it on the third fret of the A string, making a C note. Here it comes. have to make it you know um 80s influenced you know pop either it could be If I had my capo here, um, Christopher Cross does that. Um, it's, Sailing by Christopher Cross. That chord, and we've talked about this before, I feel like, too. But that chord, that, that is such a beautiful rub, and it's such a, a great chord to use, especially, again... Where I feel like this really shines is either you're the only guitar player, especially in a three-piece band, uh, where it's just you, the bass player, and a drummer, and you know, you're know you looking for ways to really spice up, and it, nothing else, just to differentiate you know, one song that's got you know predominantly major chords or simple chords. Nothing wrong with simple chords, but it's nice to have a few spices in the cabinet that you can break out and dress up that bologna sandwich a little bit different than the beautiful bologna sandwich you served up just moments before. So it's nice to have some different flavors, right? But it's also nice, too, if you're in a situation where, you know, you're playing in a big band, and sometimes, you know, if you've got another guitar player, and there's just a lot of stuff being covered, it's nice to have, you know, even if it's just for just one moment, just some kind of chord to just freshen up a section of a song. It's also nice to not play. We can talk about that too, if you like. But isn't that, isn't that beautiful? And what is that? I'm just basically playing a B minor over a G. And really, I'm even kind of further deconstructing it so that it's just, again, you can think of it as just a D major over that G and that C. Right? The D with C in the bass. By the way, uh, that last lesson where I did that little Can't Find My Way Home. There's that little moment right there. It goes by really fast, but that is basically the same thing. Right? It's a pretty sound. That sounds specifically, if you were writing that chord out, you could think of it as either D over C, or you might think of it as C with a sharp 11 on it. The sharp 11 would be the F sharp. Why is it a sharp 11? In the key of C, there's only an F. And if you wanted that to be an F sharp, it would have to be a sharp 4. F is the fourth of C. However, we want this F sharp to not be right next to that C, and more importantly, we want everyone to know that it is definitely not just a flat five kind of sound. It is up high. It's a sharp 11. If that doesn't make sense, comment below. I'll explain it to you. But when you see chords that have that kind of 
very specific recipe out to the right of the, the letter. They're telling you exactly kind of where they want those notes placed. And most of the time, it's to facilitate some sort of intrinsic chord melody that is in the chord structure. So I hope this helps. What we've got on the table for this chord and coffee is we've got dangerous major chords. I'm going to challenge you. Try to find uh, a place in even the stuff, even if you're just playing by yourself, just for the pure enjoyment of playing guitar. Try to find a place where you can get you know, a D chord over a G. Or, hey, how about this? The five and the one collided together in any key. How about a B over an E? It's a really pretty sound. It's something different. It's still very major. It's still very, you're home, you're safe, but there's a little bit of tension. It's a little bit of camping out in the backyard, but you're still home, right? Hope y'all are enjoying this. Comment below if you want to see me do. I'm thinking about doing this acoustic gig at a coffee house. More on that later. But if you'd like to come along with that, I would love to take my chords and coffee community because I love y'all. Y'all are the most encouraging guitar players on the planet. And I appreciate you that. I appreciate that about you. I wish you would also just feel free to encourage one another and uh, get to know each other. There's some great folks watching this. So y'all have a wonderful Saturday. We'll see you next time.